Hello everybody, this is Bazker back again with another gaming video. This time I thought we might take a look at RimWorld. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, RimWorld is kind of a little colony simulation game. Um, kind of think of it, um, if you've ever played Dwarf Fortress, I haven't, but I've heard it compared to that a lot. Um, it's a, very much it's just a bunch of colonists that get dropped onto a uh, planet after their kind of their ship explodes or some major um, ordeal happens on it and they end up on the outskirts of the known universe on a rim world um, it's got a very um, uh, kind of western sci-fi feel to it so if you've ever watched the show Firefly um, or seen the movie Serenity um, it, it's very much um, like that and in fact I believe um, the developer who is uh, Tynan Sylvester here um, actually said he drew a lot of inspiration from that um, so, anyways, I'm going to assume that most of you have seen RimWorld before, if you're watching this. Um, if you haven't, um, let me know in the comments and we can, um, you know, maybe do kind of a overview video or something. Otherwise, I'm just going to kind of play through this series and um, I'll kind of show you some things as I go. But um, I'm going to try to make this one more about gameplay than about uh, the learning curve of it. Because uh, the, really, the learning curve is not all that steep. So, um, I am going to be using a few mods for this. Um, I'm going to be using, um, so core mod, if you don't know, that's just the game itself. You have to have that active. Um, I'm going to be using EDB mod order, which is actually this window that you're looking at right now. Um, I'm going to be using prepare carefully, um, which allows me to basically um, customize my colonists um, that are going to fall. Um, if you don't do this, they just fall and they, you know, have all kinds of random traits, which is fine. Um, and I do play like that, but I kind of want to, um, play this on a little harder difficulty than I'm used to, so I want to make sure I do some uh, preparing carefully. Um, colonist bar will just put some stuff at the top of the screen um, to allow you to easily select your colonist. Um, miscellaneous core is required for um, some of these other mods that we have down here. Um, closable vents, all this does is to the vent that's in game. Um, normally it doesn't close, it's always open, so you put a vent in and it just allows temperature to go, travel from room to room, um, which is great, but making it closable is even better, um, and we'll show you some tricks on what you can do with that. Um, embracers, I'm not sure if I'll actually use these or not a whole lot, um, but basically it allows you to shoot through walls. However, when I was playing with them in um, one of my um, other games, I noticed that it also allows enemies to shoot in. So um, I'm not sure how great they are, at least not for putting on your main structure. Now maybe putting them as a barricade or something and using them as part of that, that might be kind of cool. Um, plants 24 hours, basically it, all this does is it allows plants to actually grow as long as there's light. Um, so normally in the game, even if you have a room set up um, where um, you, maybe you have a sun lamp in it and it's running 24-7, the s plants won't grow um, for a period of time even if that light is turned on. Um, and this basically gets around it. Um, miscellaneous training uh, just puts in some like targets for people to um, beat on so that they um, can skill up. I haven't actually utilized them, not sure if I will in this playthrough or not. Uh, miscellaneous robots is a... Um, basically they're like little um, Roombas. Um, they go around like they can clean, um, some of them can harvest, um, which is actually what this one is if I remember correctly, it's a harvesting bot. Um, but, um, and they can haul, I think. Um, they're fairly rare. You can't make them. They're only sold by traders. And um, traders don't bring them very often. And when they do, they're usually pretty expensive. So, anyways, that is our mods. And I'm going to create a brand new world for this. I don't know what I'm going to call it. Uh, this is actually a seed. This is just what generates the world itself. It doesn't really matter. Um, you can use a totally random seed, or you can actually utilize something yourself. I'm going to just start with a random one and add a couple numbers to it. I'm going to go with a, um, I don't know, it doesn't really make much of a difference. I'll just pick a, I'm going to pick a slightly bigger size. found a um, large hills. I went ahead and did this while I was um, off camera there just to make sure that um, you didn't have to waste a lot of time and I didn't have to do a ton of editing so we're gonna do large hills um, it's got 51 degrees Fahrenheit and 81 degrees Fahrenheit for the high and the low um, really good means we're probably not gonna freeze to death most of the time and we're probably not gonna cook to death all the time however there are heat waves and cold waves and things of that nature so um, it's something to still keep in mind 
but I think this is where we're going to go for. We also don't have, um, I don't know that it makes a difference, but there are things on the map. I don't know if I can find one real easily or not. I'm not seeing any right offhand. But there are, like, other tribes, and sometimes if you build right behind them, uh, right beside them, I think that they um, will actually, uh, you know, come upon you more often. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing is hard to say. It depends on the tribe. But, um... I, I tend not to build right next to them, whether or not, like I said, it actually makes a difference, I'm not sure, it's just been kind of an observation that I've made. Um, I am by no means an expert on this game, I'm going to put that out there right now, that's why I said this is probably not going to be a tutorial video of by any means, but I have played it a great deal. Um, I've been playing for the last oh, two, two or three alphas, uh, three I think if you include 13, so um, I know my way around it, but um, I'm not, like I said, an expert by any means. So anyways, we're going to go ahead and start game or uh, save the world um, and then what we have to do is create a colony and on your colony you get storytellers um, and so the first one Cassandra Classic what she does is she just kinda ramps up the story as it goes you get a steady curve um, so you know start off with a you know maybe an easy event and then um, you know some raiders and then the raids get bigger and you get more like solar events and things of that nature um, Phoebe uh, Chillax, uh, she's um, basically gives you uh, time to build your colony. Um, doesn't really have a steady curve of events, but she does have events, and um, you know, depending on the difficulty that you set, the events will appear more often. And if she gets like really ticked off at you, she might throw something really big at you. Um, I this is generally the storyteller I use. Um, Randy Random, not a fan. Um, I like to do more base building than I do killing off things that come at me, but if you like to um, get raided all the time and have lots of events and such, Randy Random's your guy. He's going to throw stuff at you all the time. doesn't really care what your difficulty setting is. He still will um, throw stuff at you. So we're going to go with uh, Phoebe Chillax here. Um, there's a couple different modes. You have Freestyle. Um, basically, it's a sandbox. Um, if you're playing the game, you can kind of look at them. I'll arrow over them here for a second. Uh, base builder is what I usually use. You still get threats, but they're not very um, difficult. Because um, I like the sim aspects of this game. Um, rough, um, I think is what I'm going to play on this time. Um, ba basically, it's just a step above base builder. I'd consider it medium mode, probably. Um, possibly even normal mode, maybe. Challenge, uh, a little too difficult. Um, when I was test playing, I, I'm not good enough at this game to do that just yet, I don't think. And then there's Extreme. Um, if you want to see somebody playing Extreme, go watch Quill18. Uh, he, he's pretty good at it. So I'm going to go with Rough, uh, Phoebe, Chillax. We're going to go here. Um, planets are ordered and by the date they were created. Um, so this is for another game I was playing. Go with Rana11, uh, I guess is what that is. And, um, unfortunately, I was choosing my site uh, in the other screen, which doesn't actually choose your site, so I'm going to have to find that again, unfortunately. Ah, here we go. Uh, I believe this is it. Yeah, 5181, looks right. So that's what we're going to use. Um, I'm going to go into Advanced. Um, in Advanced, you can um, turn on Permanent Death Mode if you like. Um, there are times when, you know, life happens and i got to step away or something, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, I am, however, going to change my map size. Um, I've stayed away from these. I don't know that they're, they have any problem running, but um, since I'm recording, um, that's going to take up some more processing power, too. So I'm going to go with a um, 300 by 300. Usually I do the 325. Um, but I think I'll just do the 300 by 300 right now. As you can see, it gives you a warning about um, performance. I haven't actually seen any performance issues myself, um, but I have a fairly beefy computer, so keep that in mind if you're playing. And I'm going to do this, and I'm going to go into Prepare Carefully. If I don't go into Prepare Carefully, these are the colonists that I'm going to get to start with, and I can click Randomize, and you know it'll randomize them around, give me some different choices, things of that nature. All well and good. Um, but it's not, um, doesn't really, um, it doesn't really help me a lot to do this. Um, I get more frustrated with the game than I do anything else when I have people that just can't do things like dumb labor. Um, 
you know, that means they can't haul or anything like that, and that, that's just not for me. Um, so what I do is use Prepare Carefully, and I'm so glad that we got a working version of this. Um, I did have a couple problems with it when I first started, wasn't using any other mods or anything, and it, no matter what I did here, I was still starting with um, I was still starting with uh, planets with random people. Um, the uh, EDB, um, the guy who made this mod, he wasn't sure what was going on. I tried several different things and eventually it just started working. Uh, but it is worth noting, because um, he pointed it out in the comments too, to other people having the same problem, is if you have any mods installed that modify the planet start, um, such as like uh, putting bases, I've seen a mod that does that. I actually have that mod, but I haven't used it uh, in Alpha 13 yet. Um, there's a, it'll like just randomly like say you started over here on this planet here it'll just you know you might get like a boxed in area with rooms and stuff already built in it um, it that mod would conflict with this mod um, and there's a couple of others out there I think too that don't do that um, you can set up your colonist in prepare carefully and just kind of go in and do things you can give them their clothes and all that um, these are how the um, incapable of and how their traits are done like if I stayed with this one refugee is going to give plus three shooting plus three melee firefighting is disabled that's a really bad one you can adjust their age and um, the age is as far as I know, um, I think they can die of old age, so when you're doing age, this is their actual age, this is the age that, um, how long they were in stasis before their ship exploded. You can do health and give them, like, items for their stuff, so like on their brain you could give them uh, a brain pal. Um, I'm not going to do anything like that. Now, if anybody is curious, brain pal, <laughs> um, if you've read this series by John Scalzi, Old Man's War, that's where that comes from. Um, if you haven't read that book and you're in the reading science fiction, I highly recommend John Scalzi's Old Man's War series. It's excellent. Um, okay, so let's see. What I'm going to do is you can save a colonist, load a colonist, but what I've actually done um, for a previous one is I've created kind of like a medium start that I'm going to do, and I'm going to go ahead and load that up. I got four colonists. I may adjust some of this a little bit. I haven't decided yet. We'll take a look here. But uh, basically, um, like um, this rough child person has um, plus three crafting, plus two research, um, plus three social, artistic, um, or plus four are social, plus three artistic, plus two research. Um, so basically, their backstories give them some bonuses or some negatives that could, you know, make them not able to shoot, for instance. That kind of thing. Um, I've given this one careful shooter, so they're going to get plus three to shooting and aiming and accuracy bonuses. Uh, they're a fast walker, they can move really fast, and they have a green thumb. So they can um, travel fast to get to raiders and hunting and things of that nature, and they can also garden really good, so they can run back and forth to all those things really well. Um, so those items work good together. I did go through and put a coat on these people. Um, I have, uh, I believe, a armor vest on all the people as well. They all have the same clothes. I didn't adjust it, um, but I wanted them to have some clothes because um, we'll add more people as time goes and we're going to have to craft clothes and things like that anyways. Um, I did set them all to 18, so they're a whole bunch of younglings, um, and they were all in stasis for random times. Um, I don't know that the stasis number actually has an impact on anything they do. Um, Greensman here is a hunter. I have two men and two women. That's important in Alpha 13 um, to know is there's um, actual relationships. People can get married and things of that nature. I'm not going to go over all of this um, self. I'm just going to hover over these really quick. You can pause if you want to see what they do. So basically this guy's our constructor, or one of them. I try to have at least um, one person who's psychically deaf whenever I use the Prepare Carefully mod, um, so that they're not out there, um, you know, so my whole colony is not being affected by psychic drones and things of that nature. Um, I try to have somebody who can cook, somebody who can make medicine, somebody who can uh, garden, and somebody who can construct really well. Um, if you find if I have all of those things, I'll do really well, or pretty well. Um, and you will get one more person um, that'll 
come on uh, randomly. It's a random event that happens on all games. You'll get a person that comes and joins your colony. Um, I'm not using points. If I was using points, I'd be 1,100, almost 1,200, or 12,000 uh, points over. Um, I'm not going to use that. I just like to do what I do. It's a little cheaty. It might be, but that's okay. That's how I'm playing. Don't like it? Go watch somebody else's series. Um, so um, here's where you can define what resources fall on the ground. Um, under a normal game, you'd just have some, uh, a few logs, a few pieces of metal, some silver, some medicine, and some food, and a couple of weapons, um, which is basically what I've stuck with. Um, I haven't really done a whole lot more there. Um, I increased the amount of steel that's falling, the amount of wood that's falling, but not by a lot. I want to say it starts at 300 on the steel and maybe like 200 on the wood. Um, I did ramp up the silver to a thousand, um, but I like to buy things so it goes quickly. Um, I ramped up the amount of food I get, um, a little bit more medicine, some more components, which is a new thing in Alpha 13. It allows you to um, uh, anything that's electronic has to have components, I believe. Um, survival rifles, and um, I actually have four plasteel knives here. I'm going to cut that down to two just to make this a little. Um, more actually not even two um, one um, so for all of our people that we start with are going to get the gun but then there's the possibility that the new person that comes in he may be a melee attacker so I want him to have this if he's not a melee attacker I'll build a bow for him because um, that's something you can do real early game now in alpha 13 um, and I've also have a male and female Labrador uh, Labradors can haul can be trained to haul stuff uh, which is really great um, they can be trained to attack. Um, I don't really do that a whole lot. Um, sometimes late game I do, but usually I just leave them to hauling and that's about it. Um, and selling puppies, things of that nature. Um, so this can actually make your game more difficult because you're going to use a lot of food to keep your animals alive. So um, something to keep in mind that just because you're adding stuff to the game start doesn't necessarily mean you're making it easier. Um, and you can add more resources, food, weapons, apparel, animals, whatever you like. This is what I'm going to use um, for this game. Um, we'll still have to do a lot of hunting to get material to make clothes and uh, food and all that, but this is what we're going to do. And so I think we're ready to start. Alright, so here we are. Um, starts off paused with this little box, basically it says three of you awaken from your cryo sleep. Um, to the sounds of sirens and, men and metal, barely make it to your escape pods before the ship tears apart. Sometime later you land on this unknown rib world. Uh, as pieces of the shredded starship fall around you, you start making plans to survive. So, I'm going to click OK, we'll see where we fall here. Good, the mod's working, we've got four people, that's great. And then pause. First recommendation, anytime you're playing, pause. Um, and then what I like to do is, if you look, um, you have red X's on everything, that means these guys can't pick it up, they're not allowed to touch it. So I like to zoom out just a little bit here, uh, double click on items that are around me that have the red X's, these are all things that I wanted to fall. And um, I'm pressing the F key, um, it's this handle down here, but I'm pressing the F key to actually um, pick, tell them that it's okay to pick this stuff up, and I'm going to tell everybody immediately to go pick up a survival rifle. And, and then I'm going to pause just really fast, and boom, they all have their survival rifle. So, now then, what I want to do is um, I'm going to zoom out and take a look at my surroundings, because you want to pick a place that you can defend and survive in and um, and be able to get resources easy. Ideally you want a steam vent as well and unfortunately the only one I'm seeing is here. Oh there's one here. There's not a whole lot of areas in this thing. These maps are you know random generated based on the seed we picked. Um, uh, worth noting water does you no good. Uh, it's just the way it is. So the, there's mods out there that make water do things, like you can add fishing, which is great. I love that mod, but it's not ready for Alpha 13 yet, otherwise I'd have it on here. It's arguably overpowered, though. Um, you can catch quite a lot of fish um, and feed yourself pretty well with it. Um, 
but it's still fun. A uh, still a uh, really fun mod to play around with. Um, let's see. Um, there's a steam vent here, so I'm kind of thinking maybe this is the general area I want to build in. This could be nice, but um, fair warning: whenever you see a building like this that's been blocked off. You could walk up here and around the building and it may say, Warning, Ancient Danger. There can be mechanites and things living in these things, and that's something to keep in mind before you just start burrowing, burrowing into things. Um, there's a steam vent here, but there's not a lot of area to build in. I really... there's one there... This kind of looks like it'd be the best area to build in. Permanently, anyways. Um, we do have some wood, and it's good because there's a, we got like a room here and a room here we could fill in, but it's a ways away from where I think I want to start, and this is closer, so that's nice. This should be fertile soil, yeah, it's rich soil, so that's a good spot. We might be able to do some gardening there and there, and there might even be some around here. Yeah, there's some around here too, so we could, that's one thing about the water, I guess, you know, it's going to create the rich soil there. So I think we're going to come up here and build here. And what I'm going to do is just kind of utilize what I have. Um, I'm going to block that off there. Um, actually, I'll probably just go ahead and block that off entirely. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to use as few materials as possible to start with. I'll put a door here. I'm going to come over here. And here. And even though it says we don't have enough wood, we actually do. It's just not sitting in a storage area, so it's not going to know that we have that right here. And I'm going to put in a wood door right there. This will give us a small room that we can start in. And there's some more still right here, so I'm going to do that. There's things laying around the map, so keep that in mind, too. Alright, so now that we have our structure up and going, and i got a door here, um, one of the things I need to do is go in and make sure I have people set up to do construction. Now you got a couple of different ways of doing this. Um, I said I'm not. I, I kept saying I'm not going to make this a tutorial video, but it does kind of lend itself here early on. Just kind of tell you what's going on, I guess. Um, so you can do it two ways. You can just check mark off the things you want people to do, and if you hover over it, you'll see how good they are at it. You know, a relevant skill of 5 of 20, so basically 20 is as high as the skill could be, so if at 5 they're kind of low on the skill, but um, they get experience points as they do the jobs, um, so they um, can bring that skill level up from what they started with. And if you notice the little um, flames, that's what these are, little flames. Um, one flame means, you know, they, they like the job kind of, and they're going to get a small bonus for them doing that job. Um, it means they're passionate about it. It's a passionate flame. Um, two flames means that they're really passionate about the job and they're going to get a big bonus for um, doing those jobs and their skill level will go up that much faster. Um, how much faster each of these things are, I'm not sure. I haven't actually checked. Um, so you can do that just by checking it off and basically anything on this side of it is a higher priority. Everything on this side is a lower priority. So they'll do firefighting if it needs done. That'll be the first thing they go to do. If they're ill, they'll be a patient. Um, you know, they'll doctor on people, blah, 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 all the way across. Um, what I like to do, actually, though, is turn on um, manual priorities. And then you can set each one of these priorities from one to three. So now, um, what it'll do is it'll still go higher priority to low priority, but it'll say, okay, priority, um, this is a priority number one, this one's a priority three, 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 three. So it would say, when it's going to go through this list, and it's going to find the first number one that it finds. And when it finds it, it'll it'll do that. And then when they're done with that job, or they've um, had a nap or something, you know, they've decided they need to do joy or things like that, then it'll go back through the list, find the next number one. Um, so if this job was done, there was nothing else, it would move on to the next one, or the two, um, so so on. And you just click to have that happen. So, for instance, I want everybody to be firefighters. So if I left-click on that um, two times, it'll become once. Um, I wish I could just type on him or something. Um, there's a mod out there. I believe it's actually the same mod that'll give you this, but he's had to kind of piece the mod together a little bit um, as he goes to um, 
because it, I guess a lot of stuff changed in Alpha 13. Um, but there's a mod out there that'll allow you to change the priorities on a single thing uh, from the top, but um, it doesn't do it in the base game. Um, I like to make sure everybody that can firefight is a firefighter. I want everybody to be a patient first if they're sick. Um, you can always right click on them and tell them to go do something else if they're doing something you don't want them to do. Um, this person's my best doctor, really, so I'll probably make him the doctor. Um, actually, Rex might be a woman, I don't recall. Um, let's see. Um, I can make other people a doctor if I want. Um, I'm might, I'm going to do that on this one, just give it a four priority, so if this guy's real busy working on doctoring, this guy can do it too. Um, bed rest, set that to a one for everybody. We may adjust it later. Flick, um, so like I was saying earlier, um, closed vents. Um, that's a flicking operation. Um, if there's lights and you want to turn those on or power switches to turn on like uh, gun turrets, things of that nature, I want them to go do that as soon as possible. It's a really quick job when they do it, so that's what I want them to do. Um, wardening, if you have prisoners, I'm going to set this guy to a 1. He's my best at it. This guy's good. This guy's even better, but he's not passionate about it. So I'm going to let them warden as well, but I'm not going to turn up the priority at all. Um, and this guy is passionate about it, so I'm going to go ahead and let him do it too. Um, this guy's probably our best handler. He's the one who can train our dogs. This guy's good at it too, but he's not passionate about it, so I'm going to make him a two. Um, and I think I'm going to leave the other two off on that. Now, cooks. This is where you want to make sure you don't um, have cooks that are bad at their job. Because what will happen is they'll make a meal, and the meal won't be any good and your people get sick. You don't want that to happen. So I'm going to make him a one. And that's probably going to be his biggest job if I had to guess. Um, we may be something different in the end. I don't know. Um, yeah, the other guys are really low on the list, so I'm not going to let them cook, at least not right now. Um, what we need is constructors. And unfortunately, I set this guy up probably to be the best constructor as well. That's some kind of bad planning on my part. When everybody's good at everything, you want them to do everything. So what I'm going to do is this guy's not maybe as good at it as this guy, but he's really passionate about it, so he's going to become my constructor and my repairer. This guy, he can repair as well. I'm going to set that to a 1. You don't have to repair a lot, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, I just kind of skipped over hunting here. Um, all of my people have survival rifles, and they're all decent shots. Um, he's by far my best. Um, I'm going to set him to a 2, though. And I'm going to set, set him to a 3. Actually, we'll set him to a 2 because he's also our cook. And that's a good um, combo there. And I'll set this guy to 1 for now. We may change it later. Um, I actually want everybody to be able to construct and repair, even if they're bad at it. Um, the bad thing is, is if they build a bed or something like that that's shoddy quality, then it's not going to be as comfortable for people to sleep in. Um, growing. But I think I'm going to make this guy my grower. Um, you can grow as well. So can you, because you're passionate about it. That means he can, you know, he'll level it up. I'm going to send him to a three. Right mouse button will bring the number back up, by the way. Um, and if it's blank, it means I can't do it at all. Um, I wish we had like 1 through 10 for priorities or something like that, or even 1 through 6 or 7, because I often find myself in that boat where it's not good enough to have it just at, um, a th up to a 4. Um, mining. Um, I really don't want my cook mining a whole lot. I'm going to let him do it if there's nothing else to do. Um, this guy's passionate about it, but he's not good at it. This guy's better at it. Um, whoops, I'm going to set this guy to a 4. This guy, he's a constructor. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to make him a... I'm going to make this guy my number 1 miner. This guy my num uh, number 2. Now, plant cutting. This includes cutting down trees if we tell to do it, harvesting berries, and also... Um, uh, getting stuff from your gardens. So, um, and if they're not good at it, when it comes to your gardens, they're going to yield less stuff. I believe they'll yield less wood too. So it is something to keep in mind. Just because I can cl 
cut a plant doesn't necessarily mean they should be. Unfortunately, they're all starting off at three and they'll all get experience from doing it. Usually what I like to do is my gardener becomes my primary plant cutter. And then I just set the others up to allow it. Um, I'll probably go with a three on them for now. Um, I'm not going to worry about smithing, tailoring, art, crafting. These things we'll set later. Um, hauling, uh, to start with, they're all becoming ones. Um, they will not stay ones, but they're going to be ones for now. Um, and then whoever is doing the least amount of work becomes my cleaner and hauler in the end. Um, and that is probably going to be this guy for the moment, so I'm going to make him a two. Um, probably a... Mm, we'll just stick with threes, I think, on the rest of these. And research. Um, we will be getting a research bench up pretty quickly. He's going to be my researcher, I think. Um, and... Um, yeah, I think we can just leave it like that. Researching is something um, with mods. It's an amazing tool. There's a lot of stuff you need to research. Without mods that enhance the researching, you don't really get a whole lot out of it, in my opinion. I mean, there's certainly things you need and have to have. For instance, um, communication consoles. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. And let's see. I think I'm going to go ahead and unpause this, because this video is probably a bit on the longer side, which is not um, a problem necessarily. It, it, this one will be longer than the others probably. It'll, most of the time they are. Um, I'm going to start with... Um, actually, let me see here. While they're doing that, where do we have steel? So this is steel. You can see it here. If you click on a block, it'll tell you about it here. But also, if you just hover over it, down in the bottom left corner, it'll give you a little bit of detail about it. Um, this is a hidden area. Probably nothing scary in there, uh, but there could be. Um, I can claim these walls and deconstruct them. That'll give me some blocks and things. Um, this is a new item, Compact Machinery, Alpha 13. This gives you components. And, oh good, there's some steel right here, so that's awesome. Didn't see that to begin with. And you can see they're building pretty fast. This is just on the one times play. I usually play on about two times, but for now I'm going to start on this. And they're not doing anything else right now. You can already see they're getting bored. Um, and over here it will eventually say they're idle. Um, they will walk around sometimes and be idle, but really what they're doing is just getting joy. So we're going to tell that guy to mine. Now, I'm going to pause really quick, because one thing we need to do that we haven't done yet is set up some zones. Um, dumping zone is an important thing to have, um, and I generally set it off to the side of my... Um, base area of somewhere. Um, it's temporary. It'll store things like these rock chunks, so if we end up as we're mining up in here, we end up with some rock chunks or something, we'll need some place to dump them. Also corpses, until we have graves or something to do with corpses, we can, um, we'll need some place to put them, and over here is just as good a place as any for now. Stockpiles is where all the primary stuff will go, and I always put it on the inside to begin with. Um, I'm just going to set up like a little 5x5 five five area right here, and that way they can move all the stuff inside. Stuff that sits outside for a long period of time will degrade. So like this, medicine, all this stuff will degrade. Weapons, clothes, all of that. So we definitely want to um, get this stuff moved in. And that's what our haulers should start doing here pretty quickly. And you can see I closed in an area and it's getting a roof. It's worth mentioning that rooms can only be so big. I'm not sure how big they are offhand. It's a certain number of cells. Um, so if I know I'm going to be building a big room, a lot of times I'll just build like a pillar in the middle, or if it's a really big room, maybe like a pillar here and a pillar here kind of thing. So I'm going to um, give them some beds. Now, what I'm going to do to start with, because I don't know how long it's going to take them to build the beds, I'm going to give them some sleeping spots. And I'm just going to put sleeping spots right here. I need four of them. They build immediately. They're just on the ground, but they got a roof over their head, so that's a good thing. And an animal sleeping spot. I got two dogs. I'm gonna put them in there. We'll let them have some place to sit and sleep. Keeping your animals together will um, raise the likelihood that they'll um, that the female will get pregnant and have puppies. Um, and as you can see, we got a rabbit sitting in here. I'm gonna go ahead and hunt that rabbit. I said I don't want him in our room. And it'll give us some raw meat. They can eat raw meat. They won't be happy about it, but they can do it. Um, and with any luck, maybe the dogs will eat it instead. And I'm going to give them some orders, because we have some berries around here. I don't know how many of them are harvestable, but I'm using the harvest tool, and I'm just telling them to harvest a few of those. They'll come in and put it in here. 
and eventually we're going to diversify our stockpiles quite a bit. We'll build a freezer and um, so, uh, a room for like clothing and weapons to go, one for stuff because these things like the steel and silver don't really need to be out inside. They can be outside. Now the danger to doing something like this, as hunting in here, is I could accidentally kill somebody. He's got a pretty good shooting rating, so I'm not too worried about it. Okay, good, we got him, so that's good. You can see he splattered blood now. Uh, hopefully we'll get somebody cleaning that up here before long. And I can't actually tell my cleaner, so if I go and I look in here and I got... Oh, okay, I've told this guy that he needs to clean, so if I click on him... He's hauling this rabbit over here for now. Um... That's worth mentioning. My, you have to butcher them before you can actually get the raw meat. But if I wanted, I could come up here and right-click and tell it to prioritize cleaning the hair blood. I'm not going to do that right now, though. I'm going to build um, some beds, and I think I'm going to build them out of wood. Steel is nice and all, but um, it's something that I want to use sparingly. I mean, we got some right next to us, which is great, but. I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to tell them to um, chop down some wood, have some around here, and get that going. And the nice thing is, is about these beds, even though they're building them here, we can uninstall them and move them somewhere else later. That's really nice. And they're all going to get their own bedrooms eventually. And you can see this guy made a shoddy bed. So, it's not a great bed, but it's a bed. He made a poor bed. It's better than shoddy. He'll get better as he goes. Alright, um, let's see, this video is running long, I know it is, but I really would like to start getting a freezer. I tend to build my freezers into, um, wherever I'm, uh, into the mountainsides. Um, there is a certain amount of loss of temperature outside of walls, but you can counteract it by doubling them up. Um, I don't believe material makes a difference. Um, I kind of think, though, for simplicity's sake, I am going to build my, um, walls, or my freezer out here. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. This will give me the ability to, um, maybe go ahead and put my cook stations in here, and then I can build maybe, like, a door right here or something. Um, it's a possibility. And, I not really a trick... Um, that I learned from somebody else, but it's a trick I saw somebody else doing that um, I hadn't done in a while, is um, there is the ability to, um, when you build your temperature, your coolers here, and then this is why I wanted the closing of the vent, because uh, they were doing it differently than I've done it in the past, but, um, so you got uh, hot and cold there, right? So if I, whoops, if I rotate it around, been playing Banish too long, pressing the R key there to rotate it. So if I rotate it around and I put this like right here, great, I, I'm going to cool it. But that's some hot air going out into the world that we could be utilizing. Um, so, um, and that's probably what will happen to begin with, but what would be nice is if I built in the ability for this hot air to get cycled back into my base at some point in time so that we can utilize the heat that's coming off of it. And we're actually going to do that. Um, we will be doing that for sure. I'm going to build it here for now, and then probably what I'll do is I'll tunnel in something like this um, to bring the heat back around into the building, and we'll use a vent and close it off so that it, the air doesn't come through until we want it to. Alright, so I'm going to let these guys get this stuff built. So, even though I kept saying I'm not going to have this be a tutorial video, it's becoming quite the tutorial video, I think. So, that's okay. We'll, you know, we'll go with what works. I'm going to go ahead and tell him to mine out this area here. And then this is where we'll put in our door um, for it. And I, I may put in an um, airlock. It's something I used to do a lot, but I've done a lot of reading on it. And I don't know that it actually makes any kind of difference to have an actual airlock. The only real thing it does is if I so if I had a door here if there was a wall and a small tunnel right here about the biggest thing it does is it allows for this to be um, uh, if somebody accidentally drops something on this inner door then um, it won't get held open 
because or the air won't escape because we got a door down here too. Um, not sure that's worth it. Um, the last couple of games I've played, I've not used an airlock, and it seems to be doing just fine. So I'll probably skip the airlocks. Now, if somebody has a particular preference on airlocks or a particular opinion about them, let me know. Um, if you've done testing and you've said, oh, no, you, you really need that, let me know. I'll definitely look into putting them in. And we can't build... Um, so I said we needed steam vents. There is, with some research, you can get a um, geothermal energy, which is what we really, really want. It's a consistent energy. Um, but for now, I'm going to start with... Um, some windmills, probably just one to start with, and I'm going to put in um, solar panels right behind them. Now it's worth mentioning that, so let me uh, put up a new one again here. So you see those um, outlined areas, um, any trees or buildings, mountain walls, anything blocked in, in within those is going to cause the windmill to be less efficient and potentially totally inefficient to the point where it won't work at all. Um, which you'll see a little status bar on it whenever we get one up and going. Um, so you want to clear all the trees from it and then a lot of times I'll actually put down some flooring outside just to keep stuff from growing in that area so we don't have to constantly maintain it. But another good trick is to pop your solar panels down. These actually lay low to the ground and they don't block the uh, wind from coming through, so that's good to know. You can build a walled area around your um, windmills if you want to kind of protect them from invaders. Um, that does work, it, it, it's great, um, but you got to make sure and make it unroofed. And you would do that by going into this expand no roof area. And so, like, if I didn't want this area to be roofed in, I'd just draw a box over it and it would remove the roof. Um, so that's definitely something we may end up doing in the future. I'm not going to worry about it right now. And if you look at our hair here, you can see he's not refrigerated, so he's going to spoil in two days. So what I'd really like to do is get some power up and going and be able to get him in here. And you can see we're already out of space on the inside here. So what I'm going to do, just real quickly, is I'm going to come outside here. Let's see. Maybe, maybe right here for now. And what I'm going to do is come into the storage here. I'm going to clear all. And you got all the different categories of things that you can put in. Um, I don't want any food being out here. I don't want any manufactured resources being out here. However, I do want, I think, some raw resources out here. So I'm going to say it's okay to store stands. Don't blocks, silver, gold, steel, plasteel, not wood. Wood will degrade outside. Um, uranium, jade, these are all okay. I'm going to let those things out there. And just to make sure they get moved, I'm going to say that this is a higher priority than normal. For now, I'm just going to go to preferred. When we build food in here, it'll be critical. We we'll want all of our food to sit in here. And the good news is, is we've got some berries that we were able to pick, so that's awesome. That's a really good starting tip if you're not used to playing the game and you got things out here that can you can collect berries, do it. Um, that's a great way to get some food. And you can see people are going to start to go to sleep. Um, some of them will work longer than they need to, and that's actually something I need to do here, is if you go into Restrict, you can see that um, these purple areas, that's sleep, and these gray areas is anything, so they could ha we're telling them that between these hours, you have to sleep. Between these hours, do anything you want. This is a bit much, in my opinion. Um, what I like to tell them to do is go in and say, you can do anything between, say, hours such as this. We may increase and reduce based on you know, how old they are and things like that as time goes on. And if they're not getting enough joy in their time, if they're not saying, okay, I want some joy in their own way, then I may go in and tell them, okay, at this particular hour you're going to get joy. At this particular hour you're going to get joy. Um, you can also restrict their area. So if you can see this is our home area, it, the home area will expand automatically to include every, where you've built. Area 1 doesn't exist yet, you'd have to um, draw it in, but for my people I'm just leaving them as unrestricted. And the other thing I wanted to do really quick is on my animals, whoops, uh, my animals, I'm going to go into training, I'm going to tell them obedience and haul. And obedience and haul. And before we end the episode here, I'm going to go ahead in here and, whoops, I'm going to put in a stockpile. Now if I use the same tool, I'll just drag over it again it'll allow it to go there. And I'm going to come into storage options like I did on that one. I'm going to clear all. I'm going to say I want all food. 
Um, all medicines. And not all medicines actually need refrigerated, but I'm going to, for now, just do it because we're going to have plenty of room. We won't fill this up by any means. And I'm going to go into corpses, and I'm going to say animal and human corpses go in here. That way they won't spoil outside. If they spoil outside, they just become bones, and um, in the end, we have to look at them, and our, your people don't like looking at dead corpses. So I'm going to put them in here, and then we'll figure out what we're doing with them once we get them. We could become cannibals if we wanted. Um, we'll get a negative effect because none of my people are actually cannibals, but um, that's something you could do. And I'm going to leave off allow rotten. We don't want rotten food to store in here. So, whoops, and that was the other thing I needed to do, was come in, I want to make that critical. So now they will move any of the food that's sitting over here, they'll move it over here immediately. Um, or they should, relatively quick, based on this. And um, since we don't have any research going on right now, we're not hunting a lot, um, we do have some mining. Now, yeah, those we still have them sell set to this, so I think I'm going to actually switch these to two at the moment. We're gonna haul, or we're gonna mine some more too, and we're gonna mine out some of this so we can put in more stuff. But um, I need to mine out this, a lot of it, anyways. Maybe not the whole thing. Um, and then we're gonna build in um, like a butcher table and a cooking table. Um, but we can't do some of this until we actually get this um, production. You can get an electric stove and a fuel stove. Fuel stove requires wood. And to keep it fueled. It works, um, but I like the electric stove much better. Um, sometimes it's not a bad idea to have them both, and then that way you have a backup in case you get a solar flare. When solar flares happen, you get no power. Um, and um, So it's just something to keep in mind. But um, I think I'm going to call this an episode here. Uh, we didn't do a ton. We just kind of got the basics set up. But uh, join me next time for another episode of RimWorld, and uh, we'll see how far we can take this before all my people get killed. So thanks for watching.